motion. Thank you very much for the nice uh, introduction. That too, coming from Dhanan Sundaram, with whom I have worked uh, since almost 1980s. We have been together on many missions in the past. So it's good to be on this mission also today. And that too, I find it <coughs> a matter of privilege and of interest that uh, in the Golden Jubilee year of the RDO, I am talking to the international crowd and largely people from Bangalore and industry about the missiles because the growth of DRDO and the growth of missiles have worked almost uh, in parallel. Almost uh, 50 years of the history of development of missiles in India and uh, DRDO, they have gone hand in gloves. Uh, over the last 50 years, starting from early 60s, when the work started way back uh, in uh, Delhi and uh, moved to Hyderabad, with the development of what we call as the India's first uh, missile, the anti-tank missile project which was done in 1960s, laying foundation for some of the basics of the missile technology in those days, despite all the constraints of technology, industry and uh, the, the, the type of uh, infrastructure that prevailed at that time. Graduating into some kind of a system development into the 70s, and finally entering into the era of integrated guided missiles development program and what we are doing today. I thought I'll run through quickly and give you what are the what are the works which we have been doing and what are the challenges lying ahead of us. Can I have the first slide please? So if you look at uh, look at the whole thing, this particular slide showcases the India's uh, efforts in building missiles over the years. And uh, Starting from strategic missiles to tactical missiles and today's missiles what we are talking of, uh, they have been uh, in variety. You have the surface to surface missiles, you have the surface to air missiles, you have all of them and today's Agni's and Prithvi's which are under production and the new projects which have been taken up, they showcase. If you look at the entire thing, the, the, the basic buzzword here has been the indigenous content. In this whole exercise, the entire process has been to develop indigenously most of the systems as they are required for the missiles, as well as try to produce them in the country. In fact, I am very happy to see many of the partners who have been involved in the building of uh, Prathvi's and Agni's. I see the earlier Mr. Bharadwaj and others, and many of you who have uh, made the task of building missiles in this country a successful one. So, uh, if you see the strategic missiles which are in the production today are the Prathvi's, the Agni's, which started with the Agni as a technology demonstration in way back in 1989, and a series of Agni missiles which are under production today, Agni 1, Agni 2, and Agni 3. And uh, on the drawing board, the Agni 5, and later on, what is flying as General Sundar was talking of the ballistic missile defense interceptors. So is the case with the tactical missiles because as part of the integrated guided missiles program, some of these missiles which are under production like Akash being inducted today in the Indian uh, Air Force and uh, the NAG which is subjected to the user trials recently and had very successful run. And some of the joint venture projects which we have taken up basically to bridge the armed forces need and what we are in a position to produce in numbers. So I will just run through that. Next please. The whole idea of this exercise was to graduate from what was the licensed production culture of 1960s and 70s into an indigenous missile production program. And uh, that is what uh, was envisaged. I want to just mention to you that this slide is not produced yesterday. This slide was produced way back in 1983-84, except for adding HSTTV and Astra, which have uh, happened uh, over the last few years. Practically, this slide is same, and it shows that the indigenous capability in terms of producing these missiles in the country has gone from licensed production to total indigenous production of Prathvi's, Agni's, and Akash and Nag missile systems using the Indian industry, the HALs, the Bharat Dynamics Limited, the Bharat Electronics, and a large number of private industries who are participating today in the development and production of these missile systems. Along with this, there has been a tremendous growth in the technology of missiles, starting with the variety of propulsion systems, liquid, solid, as well as ramjet, 
the associated radar systems for surface to air missiles like Rajendra where you have phased array radars, capability to handle multiple targets and so on and also the accurate inertial navigation systems which are needed for building the uh, accurate surface to surface missiles all have seen the development over the years. Next please. So if you look at uh, the basic things which have happened, you find that the high performance inertial navigation system, the riveted structures in aluminum, liquid rocket engines and the, mm, uh, we, we all, the aircraft guys call as the fly by wire, but we call as the digital uh, electro hydraulic control systems in the missiles as well as the control guidance technologies which are re required have been perfected and produced in numbers at the Indian industry in the form of Prithvi missile which has formed part of the Indian Army, Indian Navy as well as the Indian Air Force arsenal today. And uh, we could even do what is today's Dhanush which could be, pro which could be launched from the, the, the deck of a ship where a 5 ton class of missile could be stabilized with the help of electro hydraulic actuators with a verticality of plus minus 0.5 degrees in the sea state 4 kind of a launching situation. So that is how it has happened and it finds a proud place in all the three armed forces today. Next please. Then you have the Agni. It started with the dream of Dr. Kalam basically. Uh, he sneaked in the Indian, uh, in the IGMDP what we call as the Agni as a re-entry demonstrator. And that laid the foundation for the uh, today's Agni missile systems. Re-entry technology was perfected and today we have the technology for building the 700 kilometer A1, the 2000 kilometer uh, class of uh, Agni 2 and uh, the Agni 3 with all the added technologies which are essential for this. Not only the development has taken uh, place but also the production capability has been set up in the country today for manufacturing large diameter rocket motors, inertial navigation systems, electro hydraulic actuation systems and the mission complex, uh, complex mission control software. Next please. Akash is one of the most complex systems what we have built today because it has some of the advanced technologies in terms of integral ram rocket system which uses a fuel rich propellant to give you a very high uh, what we call as a weight and volume advantage and uh, can handle large number of missiles simultaneously and uh, it can also have uh, very low flying targets as well as uh, the high flying targets engaged. The production capability with Bharat Dynamics Limited and Bharat Electronics today uh, coupled together will be able to give these systems to the industry, uh, to, the, to the armed forces. Next please. These were some of the systems which are already in the production. Now I am going to talk to you what we are doing with the new systems. We are now taking on a project where we are trying to do an anti-tank missile which will have, which will be launched to a range of 7 kilometers against the tanks from the helicopters. We call it Halina and uh, the basic uh, NAG missile with its electro-optical seeker will remain the same but we will have two uh, versions of this. One is with a lock-on before launch. In that case the seeker itself will be able to lock on onto the target which is a tank. Uh, Alternatively, lock on after launch, whereas you acquire the target with the help of uh, a thermal site and later on transmit information through a data link on a two-way data link and guide the tar missile to the target. This project is in the advanced stage. We intend to integrate it with the ALH. Next piece. The most uh, critical project which is going on today is building of the Astra missile system and that is for the air-to-air -air missile. Uh, that is air to air missile for our LCA and some of the aircraft which are already available in our country where basically you have integration of this air to air missile which is beyond visual range roughly about 40 to 100 kilometer in range with a data link as released from Sukhoi or Mirage or LCA kind of aircraft. One of the very sleek systems with very high G level of capability and integrated in a uh, what we call a, has the uh, uh, RF homing head for the terminal guidance which is being developed in this case. The system is already undergoing flight evaluation. Next please. Uh, to, to accelerate the program basically and also to meet some of the requirements of the Indian Navy, we floated what is called a joint venture called BrahMos and under this joint venture we are in a position to develop a BrahMos missile which is a cruise missile of 300 kilometer range with liquid ramjet uh, capability flying at very low altitudes, high to low and also in a hit to kill kind of